So good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Green Mountain Care Board. My name is Kevin Mullen, chair of the board, and we are proceeding with hospital budgets. And we went through several yesterday, and we are going to proceed where we left off. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Patrick and his team to um, lead the discussion. Patrick? Good morning. Good morning, board members and members of the public. Lori is going to get the slide deck up, and we will begin with Springfield Hospital. All right, Springfield Hospital, their fiscal year 21 NPR FPP request is 5.4% over their FY20 budgeted request, which exceeds the 3.5% growth ceiling. The requested change in charge is at 4%. <clears throat> they do see this as a recovery budget, as this is a hospital that is looking to navigate its way out of Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the coming months. And the anticipated restructuring will begin in the fall of 2021 and carry them into the new calendar year. Um, their utilization, as they noted, assumes 100% as of October 1st, pre-COVID levels, plus a 0.5% increase. And the justification continues with surgical cases affected by a new full-time surgeon. And they've made a $9 million um, expense reduction from 2018 actuals to the 2021 budget as they begin to restructure the organization. So as you can tell at the top here on slide 60, this organization going into and coming out of bankruptcy is a different organization from when they went in. They were forced to reorganize some of their service lines, um, which obviously will impact um, services that support or are connected to some of those services as well. And they no longer carry uh, the service with the birthing center, which would um, obviously in some way affect, affect pre and postnatal uh, care at that hospital and in that region with those patients now being distributed to other area hospitals in the Valley. And <clears throat> as we all know, their financial struggles have compounded over several years. Um, however, this year they have reduced their operating loss. Some of that has been due to um, federal funding. Some of it has been due to state support um, but in the coming 2021 budget, they are looking to make a small margin of 0.3%. <clears throat> so our request here at 5.4%, the staff believe we should reduce this to the 3.5% gross ceiling as they exit restructure and exit bankruptcy. Like we said, this is an organization that has changed quite a bit since it went into bankruptcy. And we think the 5.4% may be a little aspirational for this hospital. Um, as they come out of bankruptcy and into kind of a new role as a hospital. Um, however, we would uh, approve their 4% change in charge so that they could produce the very slim margin that they've uh, budgeted for at this time. Um, and the additional recommendations where we do need to um, have them improve the timely and accuracy of their submissions, that is gonna be more important than ever in the coming year with all of the unknowns out there and we do really need every hospital to submit that information to us um, either by the deadline that we have on a monthly basis or within a couple of days of that we, we can't really wait too much longer um, than that as we move into fiscal year 21. Um, included in that NPR reduction would be a commensurate reduction in the expenses <clears throat> and should they um, fulfill their goal of exiting bankruptcy um, any budget revisions that would be um, caused by some of the conditions of that bankruptcy, um, we would suggest be represented to the board um, at, a, at the appropriate time. So with that, we would um, turn it over to the board for uh, discussion and dialogue on Springfield Hospital. Okay, board members. Yeah, I support what the, the staff has presented. I mean, this is also a hospital that did not ask for a commercial rate increase last year, so they had zero commercial rate increase. Um, I do believe even the three and a half percent is um, is high because they were tracking down three percent through February pre-COVID. Um, so to be up that much, uh, I think is high relative to what we've seen for other hospitals. But um, based on our discussions yesterday, you know, going, you know, taking below three and a half since that's in compliance, um, I can stick with the three and a half. I would just caution for the hospital to really be watching where their revenue is coming in because their expenses are tagged to um, even at three and a half, what could be uh, too high of a top line. 
and therefore are too high expenses and they continue to lose money. But I, I support their recommendation. Other board members. I would just echo what Maureen said. This is a hospital that's missed in 16, 17, 18, and 19, um, their top line. And I, you know, given where they were in February, I'm concerned. Um, so I would be comfortable with a three and a half and with a reduction in expenses commensurate with that, um, you know, concerns about their negative margins. So hoping this is really a turnaround, but I'm comfortable with the staff's recommendation. Thank you. Other board members. Um, <clears throat> I, I agree with Jess and, and Maureen um, a little bit. It's a little bit like throwing darts at this time, given that they are in bankruptcy. Uh, you know, we, we found out yesterday that there was some state assistance that was uh, kind of set aside, hasn't been appropriated yet. So there's so many moving parts here that are kind of outside our purview that um, the staff recommendation seems to be, you know, a, a basic re recommendation to uh, until we know more about the outcome from the bankruptcy. Robin? I'm comfortable as well. And I am as well, too. Um, I think that uh, I have very big concerns about after they emerge from bankruptcy. Uh, I think they should be very appreciative of the efforts made by the state to um, get them the dollars. The dollars aren't there yet, but it's in the budget as it proceeds. And um, this is one that... Um, Mike Halstead and his team uh, stepped into a mess to try to clean this up. And um, my fears are, are when he leaves, if the hospital can continue on the path of uh, correction, but um, there's nothing in here that um, is out, outside of our guidance. And uh, Maureen hit it accurately. I think we'd probably be happy if they even um, had a, a half a percent increase in their NPR because it means that they're not continuing to uh, fall. So um, with that, is there a board member that would like to make a motion? I can move that we approve Springfield Hospital's budget with an NPR FPP increase of 3.5% from fiscal year 20 to 21 budget with commensurate reductions to expenses a 4% increase to overall charges as submitted, um, subject to the standard budget conditions as outlined on slide 27, and improved timeliness and accuracy of data submissions. And although it is uh, part of the um, standard conditions that uh, it's up to the uh, board chair, this is one Patrick and team that um, we will definitely continue monthly monitoring on. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Okay, is there further board discussion before I open it up to the public? Hearing none, um, the motion is to approve Springfield's hospital budget with an NPR FPP increase of 3.5% from FY20 to 21 with commensurate reductions in expenses and a 4% uh, overall increase in, in uh, charges. Um, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Let the record indicate that this was a unanimous vote. Patrick, before you go on to the next one, I just want to um, say a few words because we did receive a, a letter this morning and I just wanted to um, have the board focus on what was actually in um, our guidance for this year. And um, it's, our guidance said that factors considered during review, the board may also consider the following factors when reviewing NPR, FPP, and change in charge requests. Um, the first being the financial solvency of the hospitals, um, including days cash on hand and other routinely collected metrics. Second, the hospital's expense reduction plans, the hospital's long-term strategic financial plans for sustainability, data and information provided by insurers and third-party administrators regarding actual and projected utilization and price changes. And the next one gets to the point, um, there was an assertion that um, late in the game, the Green Mountain Care Board um, brought in consideration of um, government uh, relief dollars. 
And it's very clearly in the guidance, it says the amount to which the hospital was compensated through COVID-related stimulus grants. Also impacts on Vermonters and employers in the commercial market, including self-funded employers and other relevant factors proposed during the budget review process. So th that's just an answer to um, the letter that uh, will end up in uh, as a public comment uh, to us that um, alleged that um, this was a last minute um, consideration. And I just want to it was always a consideration. So with that, Patrick, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Next up is Copley Hospital. Their FY21 requests represent the 6.1% MPR FTP increase over fiscal year 20 budget. This is uh, this request the 3.5% growth rate ceiling set forth by the board and the guidance. Their change in charge as submitted is 8%. <clears throat> uh, the hospital has undergone some new leadership at CEO and CFO, most notably, and there are some changes being made at the hospital to um, make process improvements, find deficiencies and savings, et cetera, um, and make use of the resources uh, they have at hand um, to control costs. Um, <clears throat> this is a hospital that has had some uh, negative operating margins in the last couple of years and is looking to uh, rebound and rebuild to make necessary capital improvements. As you can see here on slide 66, um, the negative margins have uh, have grown from 16 and 17 into 2018 and 2019. This year, they are projecting uh, a uh, operating gain at the hospital, and their budget um, offers up a 0.6% operating margin. Um, <clears throat> Copley um, has done a lot to um, note some of the improvements they're doing, and we'd like to see leadership take advantage of that. Uh, Lori, if you could navigate to the um, Final slide, thank you. Um, <clears throat> we would like to see leadership's efforts uh, come to fruition and find cost savings on their income statement and throughout the organization as a whole. So um, this is a hospital that as of February was operating 3% over budget, which was encouraging at the time prior to COVID. Uh, however, we think the 6.1% increase is a bit high um, and the history uh, has not proven out that that's attainable yet. And they do have new leadership, so it's still kind of unknown. We hope that that's um, something they can achieve uh, in rebounding some of their growth. Um, but however, time will tell for that. So we would reduce um, the change in charge and thereby reduce the submitted NPR. Um, again, the change in charge we feel should be reduced to 6.5%. They received a 9.8% last year. Um, however, with the onset of COVID, it was not fully realized on their financial statements. So we think that um, with the 9.8% and a slightly reduced charge of 6.5%, um, they should have the opportunity to make good on some of those cost savings initiatives and produce um, an operating margin for the hospital. So <clears throat> again, this is another one where um, we'd like to see more timely and improved um, accuracy for submission of financial data and commensurate reductions in expenses to go with the reduced MPR FPP. And with that, we turn it back over to the board for discussion and dialogue on Copley Hospital. Thank you, Patrick. Board members, Copley? So this is Robin. I um, So because the 9.8 you mentioned, Patrick, that the 9.8% last year was not fully realized due to the drop in volumes to COVID. Uh, because of that, um, one of the ideas I wanted to throw out for discussion is whether to shift some of the change in chart into the COVID-related temporary uh, increase. Because it seems to me like once volumes come back, which presumably they would, um, if they were COVID related, may, you know, we don't know when, of course, which is why we have the COVID provisions in part, um, that, that because that's built into the base, it would become realized at some point. But in the meantime, I'd be open to a higher change in charge, um, but bifurcating it between the standard and um, the COVID 
also recognizing that Copley has had some financial challenges and is has had a fairly low rate increases prior to last year. Um, those are also factors for me. Other board members. Uh, sure, I'll add a few things. One, um, I do think they're, um, I actually think their top line request for NPR was not unreasonable um, because they were trending ahead through February, I believe about 6% um, prior to COVID. And if we look at what their, their budget was 72.7 million for 20, and they're projecting to come in about 67.6. So yeah, that chart, the other chart that showed. So they're missing their projection by 5 million um, this year, although they had been tracking ahead by 6%. And now they're making up, if you will, the 5 million from 20 to 21. So even though, so, so those two years, um, you know, even though the overall increase shows a higher request over the two years average, you know, they would still be in compliance for what we had talked about for enforcement and things like that. So I, I think, you know, their request on the top line was not unreasonable. Um, I, I do think uh, when talking about their commercial rate ask, um, I also agree with Robin that um, one of the maybe not principles, but one of the things going through is is maybe there's a commercial ask that we look at as being, you know, acceptable, whether that's four percent or or a number that we say is is, you know, what we've done for the other budgets. And then a piece, if we go above that, would be COVID related. And if we do that for some of these requests, that gives us the opportunity to be looking as either mid-year or through the whole year next year, and maybe it will show that that rate needs to continue and, and that we can't adjust for it, or maybe it will show that, um, that, that there's some flexibility. Because, you know, one of the things that we are also looking at here is you know, commercial rate impact on consumers. And that that's, you know, one of the things when Kevin was just going through, I think it gets overlooked sometimes that we all are also needing to factor in, you know, as part of this process, what the commercial impact is, you know, on consumers. Um, this is also a hospital that um, put in their numbers for, they, they didn't ask for additional funding because they were able to benefit from many of the federal programs, including the PPP program, the payroll protection program. And for now, they are very conservatively assuming that they'll have to pay all of that back, which um, I know that I know we haven't gone through the process to assess, but I would have to imagine that um, that they qualify to some degree for many of their expenses that they have captured in that PPP. So that that will really, strengthen their balance sheet, um, which is another one of the things when we look at liquidity that is a factor in here. So when people have talked about what they get in 20 shouldn't necessarily impact 21 if the financials we're looking at don't include the benefits of what they receive, um, that will dramatic could dramatically impact their their financial statements, particularly their balance sheet and cash flow, days cash on hand, which are all positive things. So um, I do appreciate that they've suffered at a loss for quite some time, but it looks like um, if that $5 million just drops to the bottom line, they will end up being over $6 million and, and quite strong this year on their income statement um, as well as their balance sheet. So. The 8% um, still is is a high request. I would definitely want to bifurcate it to a COVID piece. Um, I, I believe this hospital also seemed to potentially um, put a higher number in for their provider tax of about 400,000, which would be equal to 1% um, on the calculation because their provider tax numbers are higher for 21 than 20. Um, so that may also be a factor to consider. Um, 
So I'll stop there and see what everyone else comments on. Thanks. Other board members. Yeah, I'm happy to jump in. I I, um, I really like the idea of, of bifurcating um, in particular for some of these hospitals that are asking for higher uh, rate increases than we typically allow. It allows us some flexibility going forward. Um, and, and again, as we've been hearing, these are recovery budgets. So how do we think about that? Um, so one of the things I do want to point out, a couple of things actually, um, the, we, you know, slide seven, Patrick, if you can go to slide seven, early at the beginning, and it's the average overall change in charge. <laughs> One of the things I want to ask that I, you know, was sort of thinking about this chart this morning. And one of the things I want to ask the hospital budget team to do is actually redo this, uh, taking into account what the changes they made yesterday to UVM, uh, Porter, and CVMC. Um, their, their overall change in charge, for example, Porter is listed at 3.3 on this chart, but the revised chart yesterday now shows them at 0.86. Um, and uh, UVM on this chart is at 2.9. The revised chart has them now at 1.1. And CVMC at 2.6, they're actually at 2.27. So the reason I bring that up is that uh, I think it would be helpful as we're thinking about these changes in charge, but also to put into context Copley at 0.6%, which looks like an outlier. Now, when we update this chart with the revised information from those other three hospitals, they're still low and they're still the lowest. But for example, Porter's at 0.86. So it's interesting to compare Porter over the last five years and Copley over the last five years and what's happened um, to both of those hospitals where Porter, you know, this is almost a tale of two hospitals. One hospital is, is seeing positive margins. The other hospital is seeing negative margins, even though the rate change in charge has, is roughly the same. Um, whether that's the benefits of consolidation or expense management, I'm not sure. We could dig into that at some point. But I just want to, the, the outlier of Copley here is, is, is important, but it's not as stark as it will be, it was, if we, once we change this chart. Um, but the other piece that I would just want to say is looking at the commercial to Medicare ratio, which I keep looking at, I think maybe the only one, but I think it's interesting to me. Um, the Copley commercial to Medicare ratio is actually higher than Springfield's, NVRH, Escutney's, Northwestern, and Porter. And it's about the same as CVMC and VMH. So I just want to also put that into context. That actually makes more sense now, now that we're seeing the revised, uh, once that change in chart is revised, it actually, that, you know, the fact that Copley is actually higher than most of those hospitals now makes more sense to me. So I just want to kind of lay that out there. Uh, I think it's important. That said, you know, I do think that they have had these negative operating margins over the past four years. Their day's cash on hand is low. Um, you know, their fiscal year 2021, they're only projecting 66 days cash on hand. That's, you know, quite low, and I'd like to see that higher. So we do need to consider their financial position. Um, so I like the idea of bifurcating. Uh, I, the other I thing I would just say is their just, NPR of 6.1%. Hold on a second, Jess. We have yeah, somebody that in weak. the background that's not muted. Um, if people who are not speaking could mute themselves It'll so that we can hear the person speaking. Okay. Go ahead, Jess. Uh, okay. I just want to say, you know, the um, the 6.1 percent NPR is is all price driven. So if you go to the chart there, Patrick, where it's the percentage of yeah, the change in charge is a percent of NPR FPP increase. Basically, the entire you know amount of NPR they're expecting decreased volumes, but they're making up for it in a in a larger commercial charge. Um, and so, what troubles me a little bit is the expenses are increasing at seven percent. So, expenses increasing at seventy seven percent. If that was tracking a volume increase, that would make sense to me. But this isn't a volume driven increase in NPR. This is a price driven increase in NPR. So expenses shouldn't be exceeding 
in my mind, that NPR. So, I, you know, I'm comfortable with some sort of bifurcation here. I'm comfortable with, with a rate increase that's uh, perhaps even exceeds medical inflation because of their financial situation. I would like to ask Copley to reevaluate their expenses um, and really better, you know, have an expense reduction because I do think that this seems high much, you know, the average expense growth is higher here than most other hospitals, and their NPR increase seems to be price driven, not volume driven. So that's those are some of my thoughts at this moment. Other board members. So let me add um, <clears throat> that I, you know, I think that we've had a change in leadership at the hospital, and um, they haven't been there that long, and. Uh, uh, I think from our meetings and from the material that they sent in, um, they are trying to um, uh, put themselves on a more stable foundation. Um, I will note that the uh, recommendation of the staff um, in terms of reducing the charge um, at one and a half point reduction, that's a total of a million dollars in terms of revenue that they've got to um, uh, account for and their projected operating margin uh, given their request was only 438,000. So kind of from the math of it, we're we are pushing them in a, into a position of having to find um, in their budget savings of over a million dollars in order to just get back to that operating margin, which was only six tenths of 1%. So they're operating on very, um, you know, uh, on, a, on a very thin margin um, as it is. Um, they do have this PVP, this $5 million, which I think they'll, they're going to find out in October or November, you know, how much of that they can keep. Um, and uh, I do agree that the provider tax is a little re rich, but both of those are like one-time um, um, uh, events that, uh, that, that help them a little bit. The ongoing... Um, issue in terms of the expense cut is a little different matter. And um, I would note that that expense cut uh, to, in order to get back to an operating margin of $438,000. So the expense cut of a million dollars is equal to 1.3% of their operating expense. And I just, uh, I that doesn't sound like a huge number, but it's probably bigger to a smaller hospital um, like Copley than it is to a larger hospital um, that probably has more options to uh, uh, reduce their expenditures. One other comment I want to put on too is, you know, last year this hospital did also get a 9.8% um, commercial rate increase, you know, to help correct for the issues. And I also agree with where um, what Jess was saying about their expense increases relative to their their top line increases are high, and the other one of the other factors we're always looking at is cost efficiencies and savings, and um, making sure that those are are optimized. Um, and I think, you know, I think we should put some pressure there, particularly on this hospital, to achieve that. Other board discussion. Well. Like Maureen, I too support a bifurcated rate on um, this hospital. I think that uh, it would be unfair to assume that um, any portion of the five million is going to be forgiven, but it's also likely to assume that all of it will be forgiven. And the, the uncertainty is the troubling part here. So placing a um, COVID-related uh, piece of this change in charge, I think, is appropriate. Uh, I'll defer to others what they think the appropriate amount of the uh, COVID-related piece might be, whether it's one and a half, two, or, or whatever. Um, but I do support uh, reducing the, the request from the 8 to the 6.5 overall. So other board members? Yeah, I would throw out um, reducing it to six and having 4% as a base rate and 2% as COVID to start a discussion and see where people net with that. But Is that a motion, Maureen? And, the re and part of the rationale for that is, you know, 1% uh, looks to be in um, 
in provider tax and then an additional 1% in cost savings um, relative to the increases that they're, they're projecting. Um, Jess is exactly right. The 5 million increase from their budget last year is all price. So going um, from, from the 67 to 72, yet their um, expenses are going from 72 to 77. So, you know, up the entire $5 million. So to, to 1% rate, I think was what, 400,000 or so, um, you know, to put that amount as a cost savings, yeah, 383,000 uh, was 1% on the commercial side, uh, I guess 673 in total because of what they're saying for Medicare, which we, we wouldn't be reducing what they would get for Medicare. Um, so I think we're looking really at the commercial rate piece is 383,000 per 1%. Is that a motion, Maureen? Uh, yes. And are you likewise uh, reducing the... Uh, NPR, FPP by the equivalent of the half a percent that you reduced the change in charge? The change in charge reduction was was 2%. Oh, sorry, in total, well, yes. yes. I've, I've, I'm from going the off staff, the staff. Yes, 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 yes. yes. From, the, um, from what the staff had said, it would be an additional percent. And yes, uh, reducing the NPR for that as well. So Patrick, maybe you could go to the slide with the suggested motion language and Maureen could uh, fill in the numbers and we'll go from there. Maureen, if you, do you want to restate it with the suggested motion language? Sure. Yeah. Um, move to increase to approve Copley's budget with an NPR increase of, I'd have to calculate what an additional half a percent would do. It's probably about 4.3 or something. I, I think they would need to tell us what that calculation is. Patrick, can you give us that calculation? Because wow. one and a half percent was 1.4, so it's probably are, about a I, four. The other way to do it. Sorry. It's not ahead, the number. Pat, we couldn't hear you. We're not really prepared to do calculations on on the fly. Maybe we could take a brief recess to make sure we get that number right. The other way to frame the motion would be to frame it uh, around the change in charge with a with uh, a commensurate decrease in yeah. the staff recommendation and then and not use a number. And then the staff can come back with the calculation. Yep, I agree with that too. So move to approve Copley budget. Um, with commensurate reduction from fiscal 20 to fiscal year 21 budget, I'm going to go back to the NPR in a second, with commensurate reductions to expense, a 6% increase to overall charges, 4% representing a traditional commercial increase, and 2% the COVID increase, and reducing the requested 6.1% NPR by the impact of the adjusted change in charge from 8% to 6%, subject to the standard budget conditions that outlined on slide 27 and improved timeliness and accuracy of data submissions to the board. I'll second. Board discussion? Hearing no further board discussion, I'm going to open it up to public comment on the motion um, for Copley Hospital to um, reduce the um, overall increase in change of charge to 6% with a 4% um, regular component and a 2% COVID component um, and a commensurate reduction in the NPR FPP um, in my mind, I think that's literally one one third of what the uh, change was between the the request and the um, staff proposal. But we'll leave that open um, for the staff to confirm that, and it'll be subject to the standard budget conditions as outlined on slide 27, 
and improve timeliness and accuracy of data submissions to the board. So with that, members of the public. Yeah, Kevin, this is Mike Del Treco. I'm sorry, I couldn't raise my hand. That's could, okay, Mike. Could you, could you I, I'm trying to capture that motion. I, I understand sort of the, um, sort of what you've outlined, but did somebody document that so it could be read back potentially? So it, it will be part of the transcript. Um, but again, the motion is to um, reduce the requested Copley Hospital um, request for a change in charge from 8% to 6% with 4% of that uh, being for a standard uh, commercial increase with the other 2% being for a um, COVID related increase um, resulting in a 6% uh, total change in charge. And um, there'll be a commensurate reduction in the NPR FPP um, increase to reflect that reduction. And it's subject to the standard budget conditions as outlined on slide 27 and improve timeliness and accuracy of data submissions to the board. And Kevin, one other thing, the, and also reduced expenses commensurate Correct. to the reduction in top line. Thank you, Maureen. <laughs> Does that answer your question, Mike? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comment? Other public comment? Is there further board discussion? If not, the motion before the board is to reduce Copley Hospital's request for a change in charge from 8% to 6% made up of two components, a 4% uh, commercial regular change in charge with an additional 2% um, bifurcated uh, COVID change in charge, resulting in a total of a 6% change in charge with a commensurate um, reduction in the NPR FPP, along with uh, a decrease in expenses to um, reflect that uh, decrease. And um, subject to the standard budget conditions as outlined on slide 27 and improved timeliness and accuracy of data submissions to the board. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Let the record show that the, unan the motion carried unanimously. Patrick? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next hospital up is Rutland Regional. <coughs> Excuse me. Their FY21 request represents a 7.6% reduction in NPR FPP from their FY20 budget. This is uh, well below the 3.5% growth ceiling set forth by the board. And Rutland is also submitting a 6% change in charge. <clears throat> um, in their presentation and um, just, their justifications were a $12.7 million reduction in costs. They've negotiated with their nurses union to postpone salary increases in the coming year and have opted to not contribute $2 million to their pension, which is currently appropriately funded. Um, <clears throat> they are working off an average daily census budget of about 82 they're currently at 77 there did seem to be some hesitation of attaining that 82 in the coming year um, and their utilization assumptions for inpatient volume were between 88 and 90 percent and outpatient of a hundred percent of 2020 budget for a 95 percent utilization average um, this is a hospital who has had historically low history of change in charges um, Lori, if you could navigate to the change in charge page, please. So that has been 
Uh, overall, the average has been approved at about 1.8%. Laura, if you could navigate up, please. Right, thank you. Um, this is a hospital who has a history of strong budget management. Um, in the last several years, they have produced uh, relatively stable operating margins, including their projected FY20. And in fiscal year 21, they are budgeting for an operating margin in line with um, the past several years. Um, they have been able to operate with uh, lower than average um, changes in charges while at the same time continuing to produce a positive operating margin, even though it may not be the operating margin that they would uh, aspire to. Um, <clears throat> it is of note that their NPR for 2021 is more aligned with 2016. And as you can see here on slide 72 and 16, they produced almost an $11 million operating margin. And five years later, um, with costs having grown over several years, uh, that margin is being budgeted uh, quite a bit lower at 1.7 million. This hospital also came in um, with requests for reductions and change in charges to lower that margin back in 2016. However, staff do feel that it is time for a change in charge increase to keep them on track um, and earning positive margins. So with that, Laura, if you can navigate to the motion slide, thank you. <clears throat> we would approve the NPR FTP as submitted, and we would also approve the 6% uh, change in charge as submitted. And with that, we turn it over to the board for discussion and dialogue on Rutland Regional Medical Center. Thank you, Patrick. Board members? Uh, sure, I'll start on this one. Um, they, uh, Rutland certainly has has put forward the most conservative of all the hospitals in what they're projecting for NPR in um, 2021. It is, as you stated, it's equal to about 2016. It's below, it's the only hospital that's requesting numbers below 2019. Um, and they were trending slightly, they were trending about 4% below their budget through February. Um, and the commercial ask that they're asking for is $8 million. So, um, so I'm hoping that um, their top line numbers may actually be conservative. We, you know, every hospital has taken a different approach to what they believe their utilization will return to. And this one seemed to take the most conservative approach, and they've cut expenses accordingly. Um, so what I would propose on this one is also bifurcating the change in charge uh, to 4% and 2%, as we just did on the prior hospital, um, and, and really looking at the potential that they may come in stronger for um, their NPR coming forward into 21, if they have more of a recovery, it, you know, we, we don't, we won't know. And that's why I would put some of this um, change in charge in a COVID related piece. Um, but, you know, other than that, it would keep everything the same, except separating that 6% to four to two would be what I would suggest. And I could either make that motion or we could have further discussion um, with everybody else first, Kevin, however you want to handle it. Well, a board member can make a motion at any time and uh, um, if, if you would like to hear from the other board members, that's fine too. Um, would another board member like to jump into the conversation? I would just say that I thought Rutland's presentation was uh, one of the best. Um, and uh, that's, uh, in, in my view, been, been a pattern over the few years that I've been here. Um, they uh, have well considered the risks that uh, aren't accommodated in this budget um, of COVID reemerging or payer mix shifts or ACO risks now that they uh, uh, have a more wholehearted embracement of, of, uh, of the, the ACO, um, pension payment deferral for a year, some liquidation of, of investments. So they've done what they have to do to um, put themselves in a position going forward. And I, I don't mind splitting the charge 6% and uh, 2%. Um, I do note that uh, yesterday, Mike Smith said that Rutland was in line for a $13.1 million uh, healthcare um, stabilization grant. But uh, um, I, you know, in, in this situation, I, um, I, I could also stay with the change in charge at 6% as it is. Um, 
uh, just uh, in terms of rewarding a hospital that I think has done the right thing. Other board members? I'll jump in since nobody else is. <laughs> um, this, this one, like um, Southwestern Vermont, I'm, I'm actually um, worried about uh, some of the numbers in that, um, you know, when you look at whether it's 0 0.6 or 0.7 percent operating margin um, with increased risk um, in healthcare reform, um, those are, are things that concern me. I also worry about um, if workforce issues continue to persist, how uh, all the reductions across their staff are going to play out um, as far as being able to retain um, their best employees. And um, after the whole fiasco that we witnessed at Blue Cross, even though I think that they can justify it based on the, the valuations in, in their pension fund, I, I do worry about anybody making decisions to um, not to uh, to fund the pension. So um, those are my concerns. And like Tom, I, I could approve it um, with or without a, a COVID charge. And uh, I'll leave it to board members to uh, find where their comfort levels are. So this is Robin. I'm a, I, I'm a little uncomfortable with the 6% change in charge, but I think I can get there given the low margin. I do, I agree with Maureen that the 7.6% reduction in NPR seems uh, lo quite a bit low considering what we're hearing in terms of volumes in other hospitals, but balancing that out with the fact that they were down 4% in February. Um, so I think I can get myself comfortable with bifurcating the change in charge to 4% and 2%. And part of that, quite frankly, is because they have been very strong in their budget management. And when they've been running hot, as was mentioned, they came in and asked for an adjustment. So I trust them to manage to it. And if things are going differently than they expected, um, that they would you know, let us know, given their history. So, um, so I think I'm, I'm I'm there. Jess? Um, so I am, I'm comfortable with the four and the two. Uh, I could also probably get to the six if, if needed. I think that, you know, they're, if we look at where their uh, rate increases have been over time, um, they've been low. And even if we gave them the full six, their five-year average would still be below the, the median. Uh, I say that though, real, also saying that they are the third highest commercial to Medicare ratio. So, you know, their base was higher, but their growth rate has been slower. Um, so I, I'm comfortable with that. I think they submitted this budget prior to the decision to join the, the ACO in Medicare. That takes additional risk and also additional investment in primary prevention. So given the huge cost savings initiatives that this hospital has undertaken, much more so than any other hospital, um, I'm comfortable that they are managing their budget well and, you know, could, I would say that I could be convinced of the six, I'm comfortable with the four point, four and the two. Would anybody wish to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion. Um, Move to approve Rutland Regional Medical Center's budget as submitted with a 7.6 decrease from fiscal year 2020 to fiscal year 21 budgeted NPR FPP, a 6% increase to overall charges um, separated as 4% standard commercial rate increase and a 2% COVID rate increase and subject to the standard budget conditions as outlined on slide 27. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion from the board? Hearing none, we'll open it up to public comment. Does any member of the public wish to comment on the um, proposed motion to approve Rutland Regional Medical Center's budget as um, submitted but slightly amended with a 
7.6% decrease from FY20 to FY21 budgeted NPR FPP, a 4% um, standard commercial increase, a 2% uh, COVID-related increase for a total increase in, change in uh, charges of 6%. And subject to the standard budget conditions as outlined on slide 27. Is there any public comment? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed signify by saying nay. Let the record show that the motion carried unanimously. Patrick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> okay, moving into our next hospital's Brattleboro Memorial. And yesterday you approved um, provider transfer and any accounting adjustments that were submitted along with this uh, budget. So that has been squared away. Um, Brattleboro's request is 5.3%. Um, FY21 budget over FY20 budget. Um, this does exceed the 3.5% uh, gross ceiling set forth in guidance. Their change in charge is 4.9% total. Uh, that's 2.9% standard and 2% COVID. Um, their revenue, uh, they stated was 95% of their FY20 budget was the new normal <clears throat> gross revenue, that is, sorry. FY21 budget, they assume they will maintain 95% of old information is the new normal. I'm not sure what that means, I apologize. 2% uh, is driven by COVID portion of the rate to cover increased COVID expenses, including 15 FTE screeners to cover the hospital entrances. Um, and they noted that they are the fourth large, busiest hospital in terms of emergency department treating mental health and psychiatric patients. And they do this in collaboration with Dartmouth and Cheshire hospitals. <clears throat> um, as of February, 2020, Brattleboro was operating about 0.5% over budget. Um, we noted that they are projecting a 2.6% margin, Laurie, if you, there, thank you, um, for this year. So their budget in 21 would bring them back down to a 0.5% margin, which is slightly under their actual 2019. Uh, this is a hospital, too, that has been showing signs of recovery from the 2016 to 2018 period. And um, moving to the uh, motion language slide, please, Laurie, thank you. Um, we would reduce the NPR growth to 4.3 with the accounting adjustments and provider transfers. It would be 4.8. Uh, and the change in charge, we would reduce uh, to 2.9%, which represents the standard rate. And we are doing that based on the um, provider tax. So, Laura, if you could scroll down to slide one, I think it's 135, um, to kind of show some of the trend analysis we did. And I believe it was board member Pelham who asked them about their provider tax. Thank you, Lori, <clears throat> um, at their hearing. And it was stated in the transcript that they made a mistake and calculated off of FY21. And when the question was posed again, they noted that they had received guidance from DIVA. So we contacted DIVA and DIVA had noted to us that no guidance had been handed out to their knowledge. So we think there's probably room here to reduce um, the COVID portion of the rate and therefore allow the um, overage, on, overage, overage on the provider tax to fall uh, to the bottom line, and they would be able to cover COVID costs using a portion of that <clears throat> as well. So our rate reflects um, a reduction to 2.9 standard with uh, monies being found as part of that miscalculation, leaving that expense structure uh, in place there, um, but bringing it down slightly in coordination with the NPR FPP um, and additional recommendations, as you've already acknowledged, the provider transfer and accounting adjustment. But again, um, another hospital where we need more timely and accurate submission of financial data um, so that we can better track each individual hospital moving into a year of uncertainty. So with that, to recap, 4.3% MPR FPP growth, 4.8% with the acknowledgement of the uh, provider transfer and accounting adjustments yesterday and a 2.9% um, change in charge for Brattleboro Memorial Hospital. We will turn that over to the board uh, for discussion. Board members. I'm sure I'll go ahead. Um, 
actually, you know, on this one, I, I would throw out to keep their 4.9% change in charge with the COVID piece of 2%. two percent. I do appreciate and um, like the look at the provider tax and that that's going to bring them them favorability. And I, and I do think that's important and will be a factor as we look at uh, many of the hospitals. Um, their operating margin requests for next year was 0.5%. And their total margin was was 1.2. And looking at this trend, they're a hospital that lost money in 17, 18, um, marginally made some money in 19, um, 20. Um, they were able to benefit from the program, the COVID programs, and are going to end up uh, looks like with some some a stronger, much stronger cash position. Um, but their request. Um, to be at 0.5 is is very low relative to many of the other hospitals. And I think the fact that if we kept the 2.9% as a straight commercial standard and continued with the other 2% as COVID, we'll have time to assess that. And what we've said with the COVID is we can look at it at six months and we can look at it as a year. And if we see that they are turning around more, then, then we could adjust that. So. Um, that, that's where what I would put forward on this one. Other board members? I, I'm just looking at some of my notes here in the past and it um, and I, uh, I have a note that they received more COVID money, about 1.8 million the necessary to cover costs. Um, and their response was in June, July, and August, uh, revenues were a bit weak against, um, and uh, so I, yeah, I, I think this was one of the hospitals that kind of moved some of their COVID money into their balance sheet and, and is having it sit there until they know what an audit, audit might reveal about whether or not it was eligible. But there does seem to be some kind of a COVID cushion um, uh, uh, you know, in, in their balance sheet. I'd have to go back and look at it in detail, but um, that's what my notes say. Other board members? I'm comfortable with uh, Maureen's suggestion. I do think that um, given the low operating margin that they asked for um, and uh, the financial issues the last few years uh, that it makes sense to ensure they're in good financial health um, and like to the extent to Tom's point to the extent that the 20 balance sheet looks good because of the COVID money if that wasn't if it wasn't used, then it'll have to be paid back, which is probably why it's not reflected in the 21 uh, margin would be my guess. But so I'm comfortable with Maureen's recommendation. I'd also uh, just add to the point that um, Brattleboro was not on Mike Smith's list yesterday. Uh, there is a there is a second round, but uh, and I, I understand that we shouldn't be looking at Mike Smith's money as operating money. It is, uh, you know, to fill a gap uh, due to the pandemic. But uh, um, um, Brattleboro was not on that list yesterday. And that's consistent with what we heard from um, Steve Gordon at the hearing that they didn't feel they, they would be in a position to qualify for the uh, state relief dollars based on the uh, dollars that they had already received in uh, federal relief. So uh, that, that didn't surprise me, but you're, you're accurate, Tom. So I can support um, Maureen's recommendation. Um, again, this is a hospital with very low margins. They're trying to do the right thing by their staff. They're increasing their staff uh, wages, trying to impose a $15 minimum wage. Um, they are all in in the in the you know all payer model, trying to um, you know make investments in primary prevention. So I think this is a hospital that needs a, a, a stronger margin, and I'm, I'm I'm comfortable with keeping it as is. Well, 
it's it's not really keeping it as is. There's it's breaking that into two components is what I heard Maureen say. But I haven't heard anybody make a motion. So perhaps somebody would like to make a motion. I can do it if you want, Maureen, or unless you want to. Oh, you can do this. Okay. <laughs> um, I move to approve Bradwell Memorial Hospital's budget um, with an NPR FPP increase of 5.3% from 20 to 21 with an effective NPR FPP uh, increase to be calculated by the staff reflecting um, the adjustments previously voted on uh, with commit uh, a, a 2.9% increase in standard overall charges and a 2% increase in COVID charges for a total of 4.9% increase to charge subject to standard budget conditions and improve timeliness and accuracy of data submission. So that should reflect the budget as proposed by Brattleboro. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Is there further board discussion? Hearing none, we'll open it up to uh, public comment on the Brattleboro Memorial Hospital um, budget, the proposed motion. Is there any public comment? Hearing none, is there any further board discussion? Hearing none, um, the board will attempt to rephrase the, the motion and Robin, correct me where I go astray. It actually uh, might be easier if Lori moves back to the previous slide because it's basically the budget as submitted by the hospital. Well, yes, um, but, <laughs> um, so as I understand the motion, it's to approve the 2.9% um, uh, uh, standard component of change in charge, um, along with a 2% COVID related change of charge for a total of 4.9% as requested in their budget submission. Um, and after reflecting for the accounting changes, um, I am still not positive of what the exact NPR FPP is. Patrick, do you have that or should we just say commensurate with the change in charge? I would, yeah, I would say commensurate to be calculated by the staff. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, with the um, additions of improved timely and accurate submission of financial data and recognizing the um, standard budget conditions as outlined on slide 27. Did I accurately get that, Robin? Yes. Thank you. Any further board discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed signify by saying nay. Let the record show that the motion carried unanimously. Patrick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next on the docket is Mount Escutney. Thank you, Lori. So Mount Escutney's FY21 request for MPR FPP represents 4.6% growth over their FY20 budget. This is in excess of the 3.5% growth ceiling set forth in the 21 guidance with a submitted 4.6% total change in charge this is another hospital that had requested a bifurcated rate, and of that 4.6%, 2.4% is a standard rate, and 2.2% is a COVID-related rate. Uh, their justifications were 94 to 95% of their normal volume for their FY21 budget from 2020, um, cost savings, limited retirement, <clears throat> and termination of their pension obligation that will be the remainder of which will be transferred to an insurance company and they are keeping their benefits flat year to year. 
Um, also, they were now this may not be fully accurate anymore. Um, now that they have um, intended to continue with all ACO um, <clears throat> programs, um, they were not booking $1.5 million in reserves at the time of the original budget. And the 2.2% COVID rate is related to ongoing expenses for supplies, staffing equipment, replenishment of cash, urgent and deferred capital investments, and the hiring of seven to 10 new FTEs for COVID safety. And again, this is another hospital who has um, made an effort to add uh, capacity for mental health treatment at their facility. Um, <clears throat> moving on to the NPR and operating margin slide, please, Lori. I think there's a delay with Patrick getting them. <laughs> yeah, they're in. <laughs> we switched roles last week. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, so uh, this is a hospital who has had kind of an up and down operating margin over the last few years, um, dipping to a loss in 2019 and projecting uh, an increase uh, gain of this year of almost $900,000 and budgeting next year, a very slim margin at 0.03%, which is below um, some of the numbers that we've seen in the past on average. And um, so their margins have been pretty slim as of late. Um, and in February, they were operating at 7.4% below budget. Um, their 4.3% um, change in charge is consistent with their five-year average. Um, that 4.3% is now 4.6%. With their resubmitted budget, it increased by 0.3%. Uh, um, in the last couple of years, their change in charge averaged a little over 3%. In the last three years, it averaged about 3.67%. So this is a little higher than um, what they've requested the last few years. Again, as with several hospitals, fiscal year 16 seemed to either have a large um, submitted and approved rate or a very low submitted and approved rate. So um, tying that back to our conversations yesterday, uh, when that drops off, it will have an impact on the five-year average and all depending on what occurs this year. So to recap, because this was a, a resubmitted budget that didn't have a whole lot of uh, movement in it, the overall change in charge is now 4.6%. Um, <clears throat> and as opposed to what they put in prior to that, uh, Lori, if you could move on to the motion language, please. Thank you. We would approve the request as submitted for NPR, and we would also approve the change in charge um, at 4.6 as well with the 2.2% COVID rate uh, with an additional recommendation around uh, that the enhanced services that we ran through yesterday do not qualify under the guidelines of provided transfers, but are an ex a part of the explanation for the increased NPR FBP, which accounts for 1.8% of that increase. And with that, we will turn it over to the board for discussion on Mount Escutney. Thank you, Patrick. Board members? I'm comfortable approving as submitted. Um, you know, they had separated the change in charge for the COVID piece. Um, they've now added some more ACO participation. Um, their top line may still be high. They were tracking down 7.4% through February. Um, and I know they're getting, you know, 1.8% is relative to the transfers. And um, they also have, um, you know, the change in charge that's going to contribute year over year. But I would just caution that, you know, they, they may have some top line issues. Um, the other thing that's a little bit unique for me when I look at this hospital is um, they are affiliated with Dartmouth-Hitchcock and in prior years, Dartmouth-Hitchcock has put some funding in and then when they do well, they don't put that funding in. So it's it's hard to look consistently across their performance bottom line. You know, they did talk about borders that they have um, and in the past they've received patients from Dartmouth that maybe um, they were losing money on. And so, you know, that was kind of part of that. So, so I don't, I'm not alarmed by their low 
um, operating margin that they're projecting for 21. Um, it's you know it needs a little more to to look at the backdrop of what's behind that, but. I am supportive of the recommendation as stated. Yeah, I, I, I can support it. I can support it as well. Um, I will note that there, you know, they're well aware of some risks that uh, that they have in their operating statement. Uh, I think uh, their provider tax uh, is uh, in there at four percent. So I think there's a, a little bit of upside risk there that could be. Um, you know, looking at their 2020 projected look could, could be almost a million dollars of risk. They they have uh, the risk of I don't think they budgeted for their for the reserve for one care, um, and uh, they have that the borders risk where you know where 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 they need to find more permanent homes for some of these folks. So there's uh, there's a lot of risk in the budget. And uh, uh, to quote Maureen, I I love Maureen's. Uh, Ending quote at the end of their discussion with uh, with um, Mara Scutney, where Marine concluded by saying, "Time will tell, right?" And uh, you know, so I there is a time will tell element here, and uh, but I, I think that uh, this staff recommendation, uh, you know, strikes a happy medium. And just to jump in, Tom, um, you talked about not uh, booking for risk, but the reality is is that. They did amend their their budget after they changed their participation, and there is three tenths of a percent uh, increase factored into here for that. So, um, just want to you know clarify the the record that um, it it did increase what they originally submitted from the four point three to the the four point six that you see in front of you today. Other board members. I'm comfortable with the request for all the reasons that other folks have spoken to. I mean, I guess I, I was comfortable with the original budget uh, request um, and was thinking that the point three, we typically don't um, allow for, and historically we've not said, um, that that the increased risk associated with the ACO can be, you know, allocated in the uh, change in charge. So I'm intrigued by, you know, everybody else seems to be very comfortable with this, including the 0.3 adjustment for now the ACO participation. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there as a conversation point. Yeah, I could go with the 4.3 as well. Um, the, the point three, uh, you know, I, I, I agree with the 4.6, but I also agree that we don't want to look at putting the risk into the commercial rate. And so I could go with the 4.3 and go back to their original request. And that's really where I was headed when I was pointing out to Tom that it was um, factored in, because I think that uh, in my mind, the 4.3 is the more appropriate approval, but I'll leave it to the, the rest of the board. This is Robin. I don't disagree with that either. Um, I think the reason why I was comfortable with the 4.6 is because when you take out the COVID request, it's actually a pretty low standard rate request that's um, maybe even a tad under medical inflation. So that's why that point three didn't bother me so much, even though in even though they articulated it as ACO, the underlying standard change in charge in my mind was still pretty low um, overall. But I'm I'm comfortable either way. Would somebody like to make a motion? Shall I do it? Um, I'll go ahead and do it. I would move to approve Mount Escutney Hospital and Health Center's budget as submitted with a 4.6% uh, increase from 2020 to 2021 budgeted MPR FPP, a 2.1% uh, standard increase to overall charges and a 2.2% COVID-19 related increase to overall charges subject to the standard budget conditions as outlined on slide 27. 
So is my motion this? went with the overall 4.3% change in charge, but kept the MPR the same. Is there a second to the motion? A second. <laughs> we got two seconds. <laughs> um, so the motion before us is to approve Mount Scutney Hospital and Health Center's budget as originally submitted with a 4.6% increase from FY20 to fiscal year 21 budgeted in NPR FPP with a 2.1% standard uh, commercial increase to overall charges and a 2.2% COVID-19 related increase to overall charges subject to the standard budget conditions as outlined on slide 27. Is there further board discussion? Um, yeah, I, go ahead, I, would, Tom. I would just like to say that, um, you know, I, I, underst I understand the discussion about the uh, one care reserve. That makes sense to me. And I, I agree that we should not be, you know, um, paying for that through higher commercial charges. But I will also note um, that in this situation, which is uh, not the general case, that their provider tax, um, they budgeted at 4%. And that's almost a million dollars uh, that if, if you um, calculate it at the 6% rate, that's almost a million dollar increase. So I could live with the 4.6% um, uh, independent of the, of the reserve issue, uh, but just because they have so underfunded um, their, 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 their provider tax. But given that there was the motion in two seconds, you know, um, I'm, I'm counting heads here and thinking <laughs> maybe an, uh, you know, an, amend, uh, an amended uh, approach wouldn't work. No, that's not necessarily true. I mean, I think the whole point when you second is to then have a discussion, you could still, still say no to it after. Um, I do think you bring up a valid point about their, um, their tax and maybe Patrick and Lori can weigh in on that. Um, you know, I, I know they had done some looking at some of the, what people had put in and, you know, we're certainly looking at it from the other side. If people have overfunded it, if they've underfunded it, um, you know, that, that should be a consideration as well. Um, and then if we, if we did keep the request as they had requested it, um, it would not be because of the ACO. It would be because of of the provider tax piece. Um, Patrick, Lori, we will have to look into that. Is this one that we should set aside till after lunch, Patrick? If you're going to hang it on the provider tax, then yes, we will need time. Board, is it okay to uh, set this one aside till after lunch? Absolutely, with me. Sure. Yep. Fine by me. Without objection, we'll um, pass over uh, Mount Scutney for now and move on to the next hospital. Patrick? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next hospital up is Northwestern Medical Center. <clears throat> Their FY21 NPR FPP request represents a 0.2% reduction from their FY20 budgeted request. That is within the 3.5% gross ceiling set forth in guidance. Their change in charge, total change in charge, 21.1%, um, consisting of a 19.9% standard request, 1.8% COVID-19 request. Uh, their justification was seeking parity on change in charge with their peers in order to remain financially stable. Uh, they have had service area growth and volume continuing to improve in their service area in northwestern Vermont. Um, they are continuing to evaluate and reprioritize capital, capital spending in 21, um, $7 million approved for a uh, emergency department renovation that will be paid through cash reserves and not an increase in rates. Um, they are making ongoing investments in primary care, pediatrics, OBGYN, and strengthening their intensive care and sleep services. Those were a couple of the items that we went through yesterday. Um, <clears throat> and they have reached lifestyle and medicine into primary care. RISE VT has been resized for sustainability and alignment with the ACO. And they've trans transitioned away from their hope and recovery and outpatient neurology um, to other community partners. And that's another component that was discussed and acknowledged by the board 
uh, yesterday. They have noted that they're not in compliance with their debt service coverage ratio covenant on their bond. Um, and historically, they made their case as a low-cost hospital in the state of Vermont. <clears throat> uh, with that, um, as of February, they were operating about 7.3% below budget. Um, this is a hospital whose financial difficulties in recent years um, have been well known. And also, um, they came to the board back in April for a rate increase and were denied uh, the state to feel. Lori, you can navigate to the uh, motion language slide. We felt they made a compelling argument for being a low-cost hospital. We felt they made a compelling argument um, that they took what the board said back in April uh, seriously. We as staff were encouraged by the fact that they are taking efforts to mitigate the cost that they has been incurred by that hospital by the uh, electronic medical record rollout. And that was not something that was apparent to us back in April, but it sounds like they have a roadmap to reduce um, those annual um, cost burdens that have been brought about by that EMR and, and turn that around in a way that doesn't impact the ratepayer. That said, they do, uh, we feel they do need um, a higher than normal request going into the next year. Um, so uh, the change in charge, <clears throat> we would fall in line with uh, board member Holmes's previous comments on Mount of Scotney. Um, we could not justify the 7.25% change in charge attributed to the ACO dues, risk and reserve funding um, to be placed on commercial rate payers. However, we would accept the 12.67% standard rate left after that reduction of 7.25, which would be historically uh, the highest rate approved by the board. And we would also approve their COVID um, rate component as well for a combined rate of 13.85% for the coming year. Um, <clears throat> that would, of course, reduce NPR growth rate um, to negative 3.8%. With the accounting adjustments and provider transfers, it would be negative 3.5%. Um, we'd like to see the continued work on their behalf to um, reduce expenses accordingly um, <clears throat> and also um, improve timeliness of submissions and uh, financial data. And we recognize yesterday that the enhanced services around the ICU, et cetera, do not qualify under the guidelines for provider transfers, but are an explanation of the increase NPR totaling 1.5%. So with that, we would turn it over to the board for discussion and dialogue on Northwestern Medical Center's FY21 budget request. Thank you, Patrick. Board members? This is a hard one uh, for me anyway. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of my concerns that I would love to hear other people's thoughts on is, um, if you, Lori, if you could go back to the margin slide. Um, it's, it seems to me somewhat realistic to think they're going to go from negative 8% margin in 19 to 2.3 in 2021. Um, and that what they're trying to do is basically recoup that through the change in charge. Um, so I'm a little bit like, as opposed to trying to make progress over a couple of years to recover, um, so I am comfortable with doing a change in charge that's higher than what I would consider sort of typical for what we're doing this year so far or typical in a normal year. Um, but I'm still concerned that it's, that it's just not, that it's just too much to try and push onto ratepayers in one year and that maybe over a couple years it would make more sense. Um, but I don't know, I'm, I'm, those are just my initial thoughts and I'm definitely open to being convinced by other folks. Thank you, Rob and other board members. So I, I'll jump in. Um, one of the things I'll say is I think that the, the expense reduction efforts by Northwestern are laudable. And I know that they worked very, very hard to um, to reduce their expenses and increase their sustainability. Um, their commercial rate is low 
and has been low. Their five-year growth rate, um, you know, it was what 0.7 percent according to this change in charge chart that we have over the five years. And so their growth rate was low, but also if you look at their commercial to Medicare ratio, it's also quite low relative to other hospitals. So their base is low and their growth rate has been low. Um, so, and I, you know, I do want to echo the sentiment that we said earlier at the hearing. I mean, largely that's driven in part by that minus 8% in fiscal year 16 that they submitted themselves. So in part, we approved what they submitted. But I will say it certainly is low and um, overall over the five years. So if we take 17, 18, 19, and 20, um, you know, the approved percentage change in charge is, is you know, 2.8 or so percent. So if we take off 16 for a second, we look at the last four years. Um, so if we were to approve a 13.85, their five-year average would be in the order of about 5%. So they would certainly be in line then on a five-year average with their peers. And if we approved a 10, it would be a little bit lower, it'd be at four and change. So the way I look at it is I think an adjustment between 10 and the 13.5 is where I sit in terms of um, what I'm comfortable with. I do think there has to be some adjustment for prior um, low growth rates. And in fact, their base was low. They are a low cost hospital. So I'm also, so I'm comfortable in that range. And I do, I am worried about their bottom line. I am worried about their delivery of services that are needed in their community. I wanna see them continue um, investments in primary prevention and chronic disease management. I am concerned about the tele, you know, ICU making sense given their low census there. And I'm concerned that is the sleep center really addressing a, a, commun a pressing community need? Are there other needs in that community that are more pressing that those investment dollars might have a bigger impact on? So those are concerns that I have with this hospital. But I do have to acknowledge that their change in charge has rate has been low and their base is low. So I'm comfortable in the 10 to 13 0.85 range that um, you know where the staff ended up at 13.5, and I'd even be comfortable going starting at 10, somewhere in there. Yeah, sure, I'll I'll, um, I'll add some context too. I think um, you know one thing. Just just going to comment on the the growth rate overall for for you know all these hospitals is and using that as a metric. Um, one of the concerns there is that you know. I think, and Jess has alluded to many times, is you know where where people are starting from, right? And and um, this is a low cost hospital, um, and then I do look at where the rate increases are. But the reason I say that about the rate increases and looking at these numbers where we have to be careful is many times the reason the rate has been lowered, like they're minus eight percent in sixteen, was because of their their huge. Um, overages in the prior year. And so that then act actually does, of course, factor into their five-year average. But I look at that, you know, as, as certainly a factor, and we're going to see that in other hospitals um, that we look at after this one as well, that it's impacted by some of the overperformance they've had in the prior years. Um, but they also have shown, and we've seen on reports, that they are a lower cost provider. And that has created um, some issues in managing their expenses when, they're, when their reimbursement um, tends to be a little bit lower than some of the other hospitals. So I would look at, um, I'm also comfortable within in the range Jess talked about, you know, what I was thinking is, you know, we also do, of course, have the flexibility of using the COVID piece. Um, I would be comfortable with probably a 10% standard rate and a 4% COVID. I just round it up a little to give them, you know, to the 14%. Um, you know, we did give Copley 10, 9.8% last year. Um, I think, you know, they have been impacted clearly um, by other things as well, their medical record system that they put in created some issues, and they did show that they've tried to resolve that. And you know, I think the the numbers they put in for the ACO, you know, that that shouldn't be supported by a commercial commercial rate. Um, 
you know, I don't know if they can work with the ACO to try to work with them on they've they've backed some of the hospitals um, in case things go go south. But I don't think that should be at the commercial rate payers. Um, so I'm comfortable within that between 10 to 14 percent range and looking to split some of it, maybe a little more into the COVID piece than what they than what was presented here by um, by the staff. Other thoughts? Well, for me, um, this has been a bit of a a, a buggy ride um, because um, we go back last April, and um, you know the issue was the uh, travelers and the uh, EMR system that they were implementing added up to a nine million dollar problem. And uh, and that was a real problem. Um, when we came to this budget process, um, uh, I couldn't find any evidence of that problem being referenced until we got to the slide presentation. But in the narrative, it was all other stuff. Um, I also kind of uh, look at the change in charge um, being worth eleven and a half million dollars, um, but their um, NPR, um, and, but but all, but in terms of uh, but their NPR is only up 5.6 million, um, and uh, is actually down by 233,000 dollars. You know, at, at 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 the bottom line line of, of, of all NPR, and I'm not I'm not comfortable with that relationship. Um, but you know, go back, and yes, uh, Northwest has had uh, one of the lowest uh, um, uh, charge growth rates uh, over the past five years. If you take where they were in 2015 and multiply that simply up by three and a half percent, you come to 112 uh, million dollars, um, which doesn't include any of the uh, uh, accounting changes or provider additions. So, um, you know, I'm, you know, they 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 need help. I mean, there's obviously a big problem there, and they need help. Um, and uh, I also notice that they're. Uh, their provider tax looks like it might be a million dollars short. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't know where I land on this. Um, I, I certainly, uh, uh, um, you know, think that, um, I, you know, I trust the judgment of Maureen and, and Jess in terms of kind of look, look, looking looking at this uh, probably more closely than I do because I, I can't resolve the fact that the change in charge is up $11.5 million dollars. Uh, but their NPR, um, you know, overall is down by two hundred and thirty-three thousand. So I that there's something in that. Um, their deductions from revenue are, are up twenty-four um, percent, and maybe we had a long discussion with Northwestern about the fact that they are uh, kind of feeling bad about this requested increase in terms of co-pays and deductibles, you know, of of, of uh, their, their customers. And so there was a big increase in, in bad debt and, and free care. Um, and uh, so I wish I could be more clear than that, but um, I'm, I'm certainly at the, uh, the low end of Marines range and, and, and I would go higher than that. So thank you, Tom. And, and uh, my thoughts on this hospital is that it is a hospital that is in trouble, that is slowly digging its way out that has made some very strong strategic decisions to move forward to rebalance itself. And at the end of the day, um, I, like Robin, um, have concerns that trying to um, right the ship in a short period of time may be a little bit too much to do all at once. And where I came in, and I think we're all probably in similar ages, but where I came in on this one was 10.5 standard and a 2% COVID for a total of 12.5. But I'm certainly, uh, you know, listening very carefully to what my other board members are saying because um, this one was probably the hardest hospital this year, realizing the um, condition that the hospital is in and realizing that um, we can't ignore um, that they need a path forward, but also realizing that um, such a, a tremendously large increase on um,
commercial ratepayers is very difficult to justify, even given the um, historical um, record of their changes in charge. So that's where I fell. I don't know. Does it, is anybody at a point that they desire to make a motion? Kevin, I'll just add a couple things too. I mean, the other thing um, we didn't bring up about their, this hospital is um, their days cash on hand is is high. So they yes. at least do have a strong days ha cash on hand, where you know that has been well over 200 days cash on hand, um, even with what they've been through. And part of that was because of their overperformances that they had back in like 15 um, and some of the prior years. So, so I do think that is a consideration when um, looking forward to what we do, because um, you know that that's that's not a driving force here, where they only have 60 or 70 days cash on hand. They're also, I believe, they had 5.2 million on the list yesterday from Mike Smith, um, which will help to improve that and it's possible that um, since there's a second bite at the apple there that they may get more so at least that part is 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 good um, but I, I do keep going back to um, you know they are the lower cost provider and you know this is the catch-22 we've been in we tend to focus a lot on on the rate increase itself and look at whether a 3% or 4% or whatever rate increase, but you know some of the hospitals have pointed out in the past, it, it really is where they start from. So if, if they're starting from a lower base and they get a whatever increase, 4% increase, you know they're never gonna catch up to those hospitals that start at a higher base and get a 4% increase every year. Um, and so you know that that's what was really swaying me to, to try to help you know, correct um, some of that, you know, in the, in a, whether it's a, a 10% and a 4% or, you know, a 10% and a 3%, or of course we could, we could shift more into, um, to a lower base rate if we wanted to. I think that's an option, um, you know, that maybe we want to talk about to some of the concerns that Kevin and, and Robin have brought up, you know, maybe it's an, an 8% standard rate and a 5% COVID rate with, again, the COVID rate can become a permanent rate adjustment. Um, and we'll have more time to, to see what actually happens this year with the rest of, of, of any COVID funding that comes in and that what happens next year. So I would just throw out, you know, trying to discuss where do people want to go with that and the flexibility in the and putting something more in a COVID rate. I would I would add a um, um, a, a couple more things. Number one is that um, they uh, they are on the list for the for the uh, healthcare stabilization fund uh, for five point two two million dollars, which should help their bottom line. And um, in terms of splitting the rate, um, I know rate, that they rate. are in a technical default of their bond covenant. And that during the testimony, they were clear that they're living month to month with their underwriters in terms and looking at this process to decide what to do about it. So it's you know, maybe we do have another year, you know, and can spread this over the recovery over a couple of years. But uh, um, I, I do worry that uh, they are currently in technical default. And and that their testimony was that the, that they have to report in every thirty days. Now they're on a short leash. Yeah, and they, you know they did get some themselves in some issues with the um, the replacement, the EMR replacement, and and um, you know they weren't able to clearly articulate in all cases what happened and, and it did change you know first it was some reimbursement by government payers that was an issue and and then there were some issues with um, losing volume at the practices that they had that was going to stay lost and if that was the case we said you need to you know then you need to reduce your expenses so um you know they're they're getting that together but you know that that is going to influence then your bond bond requirements and things like that. But they are getting more money in maybe than what had been projected when they 
looked at at some of those things from the um you know extra from the five million they're getting now from the state and some other things. So hopefully that will alleviate some of those concerns. So in hearing the discussion, I think um, for me, I am comfortable with um, a ten or ten and a half percent standard based on. I feel convinced that, especially given, you know, like what we did with Copley and some other things like that, that that makes sense. Um, and with the COVID amount, I think I, I would be comfortable with two to three percent. And, and that's in part influenced by the 5.2 and uh, the fact that um, that they do have strong days cash on hand. So that gives them time to recover. Does anyone feel comfortable making a motion? I do. But can we go to the motion language? Um, I like the other language. Let's see. I said, uh, uh, can we go to the other page, Patrick? And the one that has uh, the one that usually has your motion language on it. Mm, wasn't it? Didn't you usually put it on the? Um, no. Okay. Uh, because of the provider transfers and the accounting adjustment, it's the third paragraph. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So move to approve Northwestern's medical center, including acknowledged provider transfers and accounting with an NPRFPP decrease um, to be calculated um, based on the adjustments that we make to the um, commercial. So they're going to have to come back with that uh, to a with a 10% increase to standard commercial rate and a 3% COVID increase um, related to the overall charges and subject to standard budget conditions as outlined on slide 27 and improved timeliness of data submission. So I think we're going to have to come back and get the NPR based on the reduction that we did on the commercial rate. I'll second, there a it. second Excuse me, was that you, Robin? Jessica. Oh, Jessica. So let the record show that um, the motion was made by Maureen and seconded by Jessica. Is there board discussion? Hearing none, I'm going to open it up for public comment. And as the chair understands the motion, um, the motion is to approve a 13% um, overall increase in charges with a 10% standard component and a 3% COVID component. Um, staff to calculate the um, uh, commensurate uh, NPR FPP decrease and um, subject to the standard budget conditions as outlined on slide 27 and improved timeliness of, sub of um, data submissions. Maureen, did I get that correct? Yes. Thank you. Um, public comment. Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed signify by saying nay. Let the record show that the motion passed unanimously.